Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm going to go over shading bodies and drapes and clothing to make your illustrations look more 3D. I'm not gonna go over how to draw figures and clothes. I have a million figure drawing videos and a million drawing clothes on bodies videos. I'll drop links in the description box. This is gonna be all about shadow placement, okay? So basically, a lot of what we are shading are a series of uh, cylinders and cones and kind of rounded cylinders. I have a whole series called General Illustration Basics where I go over like really in depth how to shadow things using different media. This video is really about shadow placement. When I have a figure, I like to pick a diagonal light source, left or right. There are three kinds of shadow. One, there's shadow that happens away from the light. So if the light is over here, then the shadows are gonna happen over here on this side. Then the second kind of shadow is gonna be from the shadow being above, okay? And so more of this, because it's curving, right? More of this is going to be in shadow down here. And then the third kind of shadow is cast shadow, drop shadow, and so let's say this is a vase, okay? It's going to have some kind of shadow cast onto the floor behind it. And this is important when you have like a skirt sitting over legs, and then you have your light source and your, your legs are gonna get a cast shadow from the skirt. In terms of bodies, when you have a face and your light source is over here, your chin and jaw is gonna cast a shadow onto the neck, right? So three kinds of shadows. Now you will notice that I don't really go all the way to the edge with my shadow, okay? I think it looks more 3D, looks like there's like a secondary softer light source bouncing back, et cetera, et cetera, without getting too much into it. I will do that if it's a drop shadow, like the whole thing is in shadow, so the shadow will go edge to edge. But when it's form shadow on the actual form, I won't go edge to edge. I'll show you more examples as we move along. So let's start with some bodies. Let's start here and let's say my light source is from the right. So the first shadow is shadows that happen on the dark side. So this side of the torso. Now keep in mind, my shadows are not these skinny little things, okay? They take up a good quarter to a third of the space. This side, this side of the arm, and I follow the, the curves of the body. I don't just go ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Okay. This side of the arm, this side of the neck, okay. this side of this breast, this side of the face. And then shadows from the underside. So example, the bottom half of the breasts, right? Because breasts on the side view sit kind of like that. And when light hits it, this bottom half is going to get the shadow. Okay. This leg is kicking back as she's walking. And so this whole leg, this whole calf is going to be in shadow. This foot is hanging straight down, so just this dark side, okay? But this is hanging underneath the underside of your clavicle as it rolls in. And then your cast shadow. So this arm is casting a shadow onto this torso a little bit. So I'm gonna, armpits are always dark. The torso is casting a shadow onto this side. So this shadow, this arm, tends to be completely in shadow most of the time because it's blocked by her body. Her legs are kind of close together, so I'm gonna give her a little bit of a drop shadow on this thigh 
and then the crotch is it's like armpits. It's all clustered and close together and in the dark, right? I tend to put in a little kneecap shadow, okay? Tiny bit of a cast shadow from the breasts, depending on how large your breasts are. And then jaw, chin, neck. And then with your bangs, I would do a drop shadow on bangs. We're gonna go over faces a little bit more depth in a second. I often like to do a second shadow, and so I'll take a darker color, and I'll put in more shadows on the dark side, and then like inside, right? Inside the shadow areas like so. Armpits are always really dark. Elbows inside the hand. A little emphasis on the dark side of the underside, right? Really just kind of emphasizing certain areas like so. A little elbow shadow there. Under the hair, okay? This arm is gonna be completely in shadow because it's a combination of dark side plus cast shadow. The way the shoulder blade sits, it angles the back. So I tend to sit the shadow there. And then on this side, the light is hitting under the shoulder blade like that. And then usually we'll have a spine divot now, dark side of the torso, the bottom half of the bum, cast shadow, cast shadow, now this is the top side of the calf, so you're only going to get a little bit of shadow on this side. It's not like that. Armpit, dark side of the arm, dark side of the palm. My light source is here. You know, this face is gonna be completely in shadow because she's facing away. The front of the neck, cast shadows from the hair. This whole kind of section is really dark. Not that so much because it's the top of the foot. This I like to kind of separate by making the back leg darker in general. And then a little cast shadow under the arm like so. Now, if you wanted the other light source, let's say your light source is over here, then her face is in shadow with a little cast shadow from her hair. Her neck is in shadow, back of her arm, under half of the bust, a little bit underneath, armpit. Okay, let those shadows follow the shape of the body. I mean, this leg is bent, but it's not bent so much. It's a little bit more straight. Let's do a few head close-ups. Again, if her she's facing the light, we have the temple, the cheekbone, inside the ear always, the back of the jaw, under the jaw, a little bit into the neck, cast shadow, back of the neck. And of course, if she is bald or he, you would shadow the back of the head. Otherwise, the hair would be there. A little bit in the eyelid, 
and contour the nose a tiny bit. I like to use a shadow tone for the nostril. If I'm not doing lipstick, the upper lip will get the shadow color because it is slanting down and then the bottom lip is facing the light. You know, sometimes I will start with the darker shadow color so that the lighter shadow color can kind of blend out. I'll put in that really dark color first and then I will, well, all of this is in shadow because it's facing away from the light. That's your light source. Dark side of the nose. What's that little thing called? You know what I mean. Divot under the chin. And then if your light is over here, okay, again, dark side of the nose. I would actually shadow this whole thing. With full frontal faces, little shadow on either side of the nose, nostrils, cheekbone. Even when someone is facing the light, the inside of the ear is gonna be darker. And if you do your shadows right, you can basically tell what's going on even without the drawing. There is no real difference between doing a male figure and a female figure or a child's figure. Child, children don't have breasts and they have rounder tummies. So you wanna shadow around that. With guys, let's say your light source is over here. Okay. You have pecs that are more square. So you have your sternum divot and then you have your pecs that are a little bit more squared off. Pretty rare that pecs are so big that it casts a, a shadow onto the torso. Under the oblique cut, do shadow that crotch. There's your tricep. Little shadow in the elbow. All right, fine, let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> I drew this croaky thing for a hand in pocket, but let's just, there's your kneecap. Little muscle definition in here. Inner thigh, kneecap again. You know, some people like to do a more angular shadow for guys so that it looks more masculine. You can do that. Inside the ear, behind the ear. Armpits are always dark. All right, now that we've kind of gone over bodies and heads, let's talk about garments. When you are shading different drapes, you want your shading strokes, brush strokes, marker strokes, to reflect the drape of the garment. You want, you know, sharp, crisp folds for a button down like this. You want soft, mushy drapes for a sweater like this. So let's say your light source is over here, okay? Away from the light, torso. Each dark side of the drape, okay? And then the underside, so a little bit under like where the fold is of the cuff, okay? Here's the dark side of the cuff. And then cast, and then oh, in here, this armpit, I'll cast shadow in the armpit here. When I have something like a collar, I like to put in a teeny tiny little separation shadow. Makes it look a little bit more 3D without it looking like it has a huge overhang or something. And then one side of the placket like that. When you have soft, mushy sweaters, okay, let your brush strokes follow that. Okay, kind of slumpy shoulder there. Let those drapes roll underneath armpits. And bottom half of this rolling drape, under this rolling drape, under the sweater onto the waistband and maybe another kind of like smushy rolly drape so that the sweater looks really comfy. 
and then you can add so see how the strokes really emphasize the drape here are some pants in a walking pose let's say on this one your light source is over here then again dark side of the light and then this kind of dark side of this drape this hip is on the dark side and then the underneath this leg is back is bending as she's walking and so all of this is going to be in shadow because it's underneath the thighs are close together so you're going to get a little bit of a cast shadow and then crotch whiskers are in here a little bit of the underside of the crotch now if your pants the light is coming from over here then here's the dark side here's that drape here's under and on the dark side of that drape it'll cast shadow onto this crotch crotch whiskers dark side of this thigh whiskers this whole pant leg is that part is in shadow Sometimes if it's a shadow is too strong, I'll go in with my lighter color, kind of blend that out a little and soften that up some. Let's fit some pencil skirts around a butt. Let's say for this whole set, the light source is over here. When I have figures, multiple figures in one illustration, I will always use one light source for the whole illustration. Otherwise it starts looking a little bit weird. Okay, so if I have four figures in a row, every single one, the light is going to be coming from one side. So here's a side view. So there's the back. Cup that shadow around her butt. Kind of bring in that kind of uh, leg drape sort of motion. Shadow the crotch whisker some. And then here is a full back view. And we're going to cup her bum nice and rounded and then this is getting to be slightly three-quarter follow the drape if it crinkles make your shadow crinkle with the drape that you have and then this is very three-quarter you have a bent leg in here bottom half of the bum round that out so we have a circle skirt where the way the pattern is drafted, there's no drape around the waistband, but, but lots of drape along the hem. And then you have a dirndl where there's tons of gathers at the waist, creating fullness throughout the skirt. You have these cones, and then the skirt goes back, folds over again. These are gonna be your darkest shadows the ones that go back in space. And then these front drapes, they're cones. And so you're gonna have that shadow for each cone. For something like this, I definitely like having two shadow colors. This is your just slightly darker shadow color. And then the inside here is your much darker shadow color. Something like this, there's a lot of gathers happening. Okay. And so every time it goes, it gathers, there's a little skinny shadow. So you're going to have an overall shadow for the skirt. So again, if your light source is over here, there's going to be more shading over here. But each gather is going to be a tiny skinny shadow. Again, so why I like having two shadow colors for this kind of stuff. For this skirt, again, these cones get a lighter shadow. Learn the flick and taper, because you're gonna taper up into no shadow. So with these cones, it's like flick and taper up. Flick and taper up. And when your light source is over here, I do make bigger shadows away from the light. And then I'll take my darker shadow color and go in here. And sometimes I'll take the darker color and kind of situate itself right in the center of the lighter shadows. And 
with something like this, again, so I've got all these cones and all the insides, cone, inside, like that, and then more shadows on this side. But then I'm gonna take my darker color and each of these little drapes, these gathers, is a shadow. And then again, on the insides, and a little bit more on the darker side. Remember when you draw these drapes, it shouldn't be smooth. You're gonna follow these gathers as they go up. Just really quick, let's pretend she is wearing this. And if your light source is over here, you are gonna get a drop shadow on her legs. You know, you already put in a shadow on either side of her leg, but this is a really big skirt. And so you're gonna have a lot of drop shadow in here. The size of a cast or drop shadow on whatever body part is completely dependent on how big the garment is. So if I have a mini skirt and it's pretty close to the body, at most, I'm gonna put in a little separation shadow, just a super tiny one, and then shadow the rest of the leg accordingly. If I have a skirt that's more like an A-line, you know, not as big and full as this, but still with some body to it, there's the side shadow. I'm still going to put in a sizable drop shadow. This leg actually is going to be entirely in shadow because it's underneath, right? It's all underneath and bent back. Same goes for big frock coats versus narrow Chesterfield coats. You know, tight blazers over suit pants, you know, that sort of thing. So let's say, here's my light source. When you have a deep V, you're gonna have to shadow each breast individually. Kind of put in that in between the legs action drape. And then there are cones again. Ooh, that got a little bit out of control. And then we're gonna go inside the drapes with these. I wanna soften that up some, so I'm gonna go back in. So we have the back. I'm gonna shape that shadow around her bum. And then again, we're going to put in the drapes. The back is gonna be darker. We're gonna put in these loose cones. You know, I want everything light and fluffy and airy, so I'm not putting in like sharp triangles, but I am putting in those soft, basic cones. I don't wanna put too much shadow up here because the light is still coming from above and this is so much facing up. And again, we're gonna go inside the drapes. Soften that up. Blend those colors. Remember, all these little drapes. Remember, with all these gathers, you're not gonna draw it straight across, but really reflect. Not bad, not bad. One last note on shading, okay? When you have really three-dimensional embellishments like these flower appliques. Not flat appliques that are stitched, you know, patches that are stitched down completely or embroideries, but these that are really 3D and coming off the surface of the garment. You wanna make sure that you're hitting all these shadows. On this one, the light is coming softly from this side. You can see how this part of the skirt is darker than this part of the skirt. And you see each 
flower has a little shadow underneath it, okay, to really separate it from the skirt. Here, uh, the light source is on this side, and you see these shadows sitting. Here is a very clear one. You see these shadows? And you too want to put in these small shadows so that it really looks like 3D flowers coming off the page. I hope this video was helpful. Please do give me a thumbs up if it was. Hashtag always be practicing. Hashtag practice not magic. Hashtag if your first one sucks, you're right on track. Please do share, subscribe, hit the notification bell for future videos. And uh, I will see you in the next video.